All right. Hey, everybody. We are back with another news segment. Actually, we got three of them we're doing. There's so much news this week that we are doing this three different times. We're going to do one I'm going to publish tonight that you're going to see here. And then I got my normal two coming out tomorrow. But so much news. I only have half of them listed here across the top. Uh, so we're going to do these super quick through here because there's so much to talk about. First up, uh, right here from Motor Trend, we got a 2025 Toyota 4Runner. It's losing its longtime off-road feature. This is the KDDS uh, system or K KDSS system that was on here. Basically, it's a hydraulically controlled sway bar, um, and it's a pretty sweet system, and a lot of people liked it, especially on the road and uh, that kind of thing, and the way it transferred and prevented body roll, but it is no longer available on the new 2025 Forerunner, so KDS is gone. I also believe, if I'm not mistaken, A-Track is now gone, too. They are sticking with just the MTS crawl control. Uh, from what I see on the new Forerunner, anyway, the A-Track is gone, so I uh, interesting a lot of people love that kdss so um kind of interesting that that is gone it's a bummer feature that's now missing but uh anyway so we got that and then moving on from there where am i right here uh we are going right over to here um gm fort wayne plant getting ready now this is pretty cool because it's getting ready for the next gen silverado and gmc finally we are starting to see people doing things on order okay notice these dates right here Okay, the week of April 29th, June 24th, and then the big one on July 8th. This is when the strategic downtime is earmarked for the weeks of, with plans of retrofitting the facility with the necessary updates for manufacturing for upcoming models. Um, I was an engineer for, I don't remember what it was, 11 years for GM and uh, Chrysler in the 4th of July week. At the time we did it, it was basically uh, from the 1st of July through the 15th of July was what we called shutdown. That's when all the plants would shut down to retool to start doing production for the upcoming year stuff. And it's nice to see a July 8th date on here, especially when we're coming from times right now where uh, it's it's already middle of April and Ford's barely even putting any trucks out. Most people can't. Chevy, Colorado's are on like 6% containment. They're barely uh, come, or constraint. They're barely coming out. So, so many vehicles are, are being held up. It's nice to see that GM... Uh, for their Silverados and the Sierras are going to start uh, uh, doing production on schedule and have everything retooled and uh, transfer over to start building them by July 8th. That's a very cool thing uh, to see that happening. It seems like it's kind of getting back on track and things are flowing right, so that's good. Next one up, uh, the Enos. Uh, Grenadier, the pickup truck, the Quartermaster pickup truck, it is now officially here. Um, it's starting to arrive in the U.S., but it is, uh, it's getting hit pretty hard. Uh, when they came out with the SUV, you saw it was $71,000, went up to $86,000. Well, this one here, um, this truck is coming in at $94,000, 94 dollars ninety-five grand, and then you do also, because of it being imported, uh, you got a 25% uh, tax. Price does not include destination fees. They are so high, though, because of the Enos models built outside the U.S. and are subject to a chicken tax, uh, which brings a 25% right here, 25% tariff on light trucks imported to the U.S., uh, it sounds like it's going to be a bumpy ride. So you're already $125,000 with that tax kicked in on this truck. And that's a bummer because this thing is pretty sweet. I was really excited for this truck. Uh, a lot of neat things to, that it could be. And that I, I had... I, I was fired up for this pickup truck, but at $125,000 plus taxes, you're at $150,000. That's pretty crazy um, prices on something like this. That's that's insane. Uh, moving on from here, Ford is sending a whopping 144,000 trucks to dealers. W okay. Great, Ford. Where where are they been? Oh, that's right. They're sitting in stadiums and on racetracks and doing nothing and just sitting out there rotting. Do they know that it's been uh, winter time in Michigan where these things have been sitting out there in the weather and uh, and all that kind of stuff, basically dry rotting away for months out there? Um, and now they're actually going to clean them up and send them out. Just kind of crazy how Ford is working. I don't understand what they do, why they do, or how they do it. Uh, but they've had trucks that have been built for six months just sitting out there for the entire winter just sitting there dead in the water i'll bet the batteries work great too <laughs> you know like i said it's just kind of crazy how they're doing this but they are now officially ready to send 144,000 trucks that they have sitting on lots they're gonna send them to your dealers is brand new even though they've been sitting on lots in the winter for a long long time but uh you know here they come woohoo all right moving on from there 
uh, GM reveals a glimpse of the refresh 2025 GMC Yukon. Uh, this is pretty cool right here. I've always loved the GMCs, the Yukon models in the Suburbans. They hold a lot of people. They got a lot of room, and they've always just been a good, solid vehicle. Here it is right here. You can kind of see what we're looking at. Um, but uh, 2025 is going to be a pretty major refresh, and there's a lot of exciting things coming into here that you can see dash layout-wise. So uh, if you're looking for a full-size Suburban-type setup or a Yukon-type thing, uh, these ones are this 2025 might be the one for you so we'll know more as more comes out on it I usually don't review a lot of these but um, I've always known a lot about them because Tina always wanted these full-size SUVs especially when our kids were littler um, so there, there's a big draw to these so we'll keep you posted as more of that happens and more comes out but looks like uh, it's getting ready to pretty soon Moving on from there, ad, sorry. I know some people say I got to get an ad blocker. I just don't have the time yet. Um, this one right here Ford Lightning lineup gets fresh price cut. Listen, whatever you do and whatever you plan on doing, just don't buy this truck. Just don't buy this Lightning. It is the biggest waste. It is the biggest joke. There's no value in it. It's losing money like crazy. Um, they, they're just it's a mess. But if you are going to buy it and you don't want to believe me, here's your price cuts that are coming up for it. Here's your MSRPs and your price cuts, uh, how they're going down. These are what they were. Here's the deductions. Here's where they're coming in at. My opinion, just stay away from this. Stay away from this thing. It is not. There's nothing good that's coming out of here. Same with the Mach-E. Um, Ford cannot make an electric vehicle for anything right now. They they just they cannot build an electrical electric vehicle. And with all the problems Ford has in so many different areas and categories, I, I would not buy a Ford electric vehicle right now. It's my opinion. Do what you want, but that's my opinion. Um, but news wise. Uh, they're cutting, you know, which is factual based for you right here. They are dropping the price of them if you are interested. Uh, this one over here, I love this. The Toyota, the 2025 4Runner has tons of buttons inside and that's on purpose. This is how it should be. Okay, the more stuff that people have to go into this stupid infotainment center to control, especially when it comes to climate and volume and uh, uh, climate modes and off-road utility, that's pointless, okay? Uh, like the new Ford Rangers Raptor, how you have to go into the uh, the into the screen. You have to go into here to actually access on a Ford Ranger to access your lockers and stuff like that. What if this screen goes out? This stuff happens all the time. Same with full digital dashes. I am not a fan of these. This is all electronics, and electronics fail all the time. This is electronic, and electronics fail all the time. If this dash goes out, it's going to bum me out because I can no longer see anything about what's going on on almost dead in the water driving here if this screen goes out i can't access my lockers or any of my off-road modes i may not be able to get off the trail where i'm at with some simple electrical issue um so i do not want that and i also don't believe that anybody's hands should ever have to touch the screen while they're driving down the road at 75 80 miles an hour if i want to change the temperature i should be able to touch this knob right here if i want to change the mode and have it go from hitting up by out of the windshield by defrost area and come down to my feet i should be able to just touch a mode button if i want my fan speed up or off i should be able to touch a button i should not have to go into this stupid infotainment center to control any of that stuff and uh forerunner is keeping it where you don't have to and i love that here's your dial and your temperature controls get easy to see what you're setting at right there on here sync it it's dual climate right there your mode buttons right here your volume button for your radio right there life is good things are simple uh here's where you're going to have your uh your rear locker your uh crawl control and mts is all on here you got all your stuff here it should be buttons and it is and toyota is keeping it that way and we love that feature even if they're on it you know buttons buttons are good we do not want to go into the infotainment center uh so we are moving on from that one uh ford spotlights new pickup or new line of popular pickup trucks ford is highlighting its new lineup with events as it plans in kansas city missouri and michigan all right uh whoa hang on here I don't know what's going on. Let's just kill the volume of this so we don't have to deal with any ads. Um, right here, the real, uh, okay. Not only are we launching the new F-150 and the new Ranger along with what comes the Raptor variants, we are super excited about everything that's going on in the truck right now. Okay. Um, number one, it's 
almost, it's already past the first quarter. We are into the second quarter of the year, and you are just now launching these. And you're excited about that. You should be ashamed of yourself. These vehicles should have been out literally six months ago. Um, and then I love this here too. Uh, where is it? Uh, uh, right here. Uh, you know, uh, and it adds to our position as number one sales and pickup manufacturer in the world and best selling line of pickups in the world. Not true. They're getting, you know, again, uh, it's all stuff that it, it's random BS, but, uh, you know, the people say it. The reason they can say that is because GM is broken up into two different companies, Chevy and uh, GMC. You combine those two, they blow the F-150 out by 50,000 trucks um, over the F-150. Yet every year, the F-150 claims that it's the best-selling pickup. Be and it's only because those two companies are separated out. Um, it it's these weird little games and marketing stuff that everybody does. But the biggest factor here is that for some reason, the CEO, this guy here, or whoever it is, he is excited um, or the guy, wherever his name was, he's excited that they are now bringing out the brand new F-150s and Ranger. They're six months too late for this stuff. Should have been out a long time ago. Uh, Fed rushes to open probe into the Ford Broncos and escape recall, promoting by possible engine fires. We talked about this last week, how they have this stupid, uh, uh, you know, it's not a big deal because it's, uh, it's, it's um, injectors are cracking. Okay, that's not a big deal. All right, but the problem is what Ford is doing to fix it. Okay, so the injectors are cracking, and then it causes leaks. It can leak onto hot surfaces in the engine compartment and cause a fire. Okay, we got that right here. But the problem is that it affects 43,000 Bronco Sport models and escapes. Okay, 43,000 of them. And uh, but what Ford said they're going to do is they're going to put a hose in there and connect it so that the water will, or uh, where, let me put it on here right here. Ford's remedy for the leak is to install a drain tube to send gas away from the hot surfaces and let it drip onto the ground. And software updates to detect a pressure drop in a fuel system. If that happens, the software will disable the high-pressure fuel pump, reducing engine power to cut taps in the engine compartment. Better hope that if you're going down the road and you got this problem and that's leaking gas out of there, you don't park over somebody's cigarette butt because it's going to be ugly. But uh, anyway, um, you know, and they put that on there and they said that they were okay with this fix. They thought that this was all right. Um, it's not, and what's not is right here, uh, right here, the Auto Safety Center, and they are they're saying Ford's remedy for the fuel leaks is a Band-Aid type recall, and said the company is trying to avoid the cost of repairing the fuel injectors, and it's getting pretty bad, and it's uh, is actually looking into this and uh, started a probe into it again. Ford digging holes, just Ford is a huge problem right now with what they do. Uh, right here, this is uh, same thing again, um, but this is a different recall. Ford recalls here again, 456,000 Broncos and Mavericks that may lose power, risking crash risk because of a battery issue uh, uh, due to battery detection issue that can result in a loss of power, increasing crash risk. Again, and, and here's NHTSA again, National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration getting involved again because they are getting so fed up with this stuff. It's just getting unreal for Ford. Um, and uh, all right, so how far into this one are we? We're about, we're going to do one more and then we're going to transfer over to uh hang on here where my pinned at uh actually we are going to stop right there because i have my little marker over top of this and i cannot access these other ones that are in here so uh we are going to stop this one right here and like i said we got two more news ones coming tomorrow uh like i said ton of news in or you know news happening this week so stick around and uh, we will have that one running for you uh you know two more tomorrow thanks again for watching